Metacham in the back. Gengar loves to see it. They bring in the Mandibuzz. You hate to see it. Against two psychic Pokemon, that's why it's always smiling. It's a big smile on its face. It's from seeing all these psychic types. No Paul George zone. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Ox here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we do upload Pokemon Go content mostly related to PvP. So please consider subscribing to the channel if that is of interest to you. And if you're a returning subscriber like Team Magic 95 thank you for the support. In today's video, we are taking a look at the Great League Remix showcasing the team which has gotten me to 29.79, one good set away from Legend rank. And this is a pretty meta team, Alteria lead, Registeel in the back, built off that Registeel, Alteria, Deoxys core. The thing is, I know a lot of you do not want to see teams with Deoxys in it, so I decided to build a team in which I replace Deoxys with something that is more accessible, that is in the form of Gengar. Now, Gengar does require the legacy move Shadow Punch, so if you do not have that I recommend going with Haunter. Now looking at the lead here you can see Altaria in the lead. You might be wondering how the heck does Altaria perform in a meta dominated by Steel types and Charm. I was wondering the same thing until I realized that most Steel types, most Charm whole teams, those Pokemon are in the back. If I have Altaria in the lead and I could avoid those two, we could do pretty well. And what I wanted to have in the back then was two Pokemon which could handle both Charm and still fighting and Steel. So how am I going to do that? Gengar fits this very interesting category where it could still handle the fighting types, it can handle the psychic types, with sludge bomb it can handle the charm types, it can handle the steel types. It's a very unique pick and it works very well so I highly recommend testing out Gengar for the Great League Remix. So in this video I'm featuring two sets, that includes the first set I ever played with this team so there are a bunch of mistakes and we're going to learn from them. Towards the end of these battles you're going to see that I improve a lot with this team and we start playing a lot more consistently and better overall. If you guys enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like, it really helps the channel grow leave a comment in the comment section down below subscribe to the channel if you have not already now without any further ado let's jump into the first battle right now so this first match actually isn't from the two sets however i know this is the matchup that a lot of you guys are going to be asking the most questions about the Bastion lead into Altaria very difficult to play out of so we're going to showcase it here in the first battle Altaria into Bastion what do you have to do you're going to safe switch into Gengar and of course that's a losing matchup still for Gengar so Bastion could stay in and win. However, if they're double weak to Altaria in the back, they're probably gonna switch out, right? So they come to Sableye here. I'm going to build up a lot of energy, throw the Shadow Punch here, and it gets the first shield. Now, I throw another Shadow Claw there to make it look like I might have reached Shadow Ball. Throw another Shadow Punch here. And they don't have to shield this, but this opponent does. So they go down two shields and it's CMP tie. The thing I love about Gengar is that the attack stat is so high, you could force CMP tie often. Now we're up two shields. I'm gonna come into Valteria. And basically, I might not shield anything in this situation. This Sableye is not purified, so it's most likely running Power Gem. Power Gem still is not going to KO. I'm hoping that could farm down from this point and then bring in Registeel. Hope that Registeel could take out the Bastion plus whatever's left in the back with two shields. So we swap out. In comes the Bastion. It's a Haunter. Perfect situation for us. We're going to take that battle. And that's pretty much best case scenario for Bastion. Most cases you're going to lose, but always build up for the Focus Blast on the Gengar. So this is the first set here. Professor Z, this is a subscriber to the channel, so shout out to him. And I make a huge mistake in this matchup. First time playing this team ever. We see the Kanto Ninetales here, Shadow, great lead for us. He swaps out into the Melmetal. And look at what I'm doing, I'm staying in. Why am I staying in? You should be swapping out into Gengar immediately. The reason I stayed in is because before this set, I was running a team with Registeel Deoxys in the back, so I figured I could stay in later, then swap out into Deoxys. Quickly, I realized that I do not have Deoxys, so the play was to swap out into Gengar immediately. I need to win switch here because I can't have Ninetales on Registeel. This puts me in a tough spot now because I swapped out so late, I'm behind big time on energy. And I don't have Shadow Ball, so I have to go for the Shadow Punch here. This means they get off another move here. We're going to have to go down two shields in order to maintain Switch here. A matchup that we would have won regardless there, but could have saved a shield turned into a very difficult spot. I throw the Sludge Bomb blindly here because I just want to throw the Nuke move at whatever comes in. We're going to get the shield almost guaranteed regardless. So even though that's resistant on Sable Eye, we still get the shield. Come in with the Registeel here because I can't have it on the Ninetales. Have to save my Altaria for that. So I'm going to throw... 
the flash cannon here at the same it's a very tough spot we put ourselves in and we get down to zero shields so sable i going to be spamming the foul plays at this point I'm trying to calculate whether or not I can get to another flash cannon here. Unfortunately, this Sableye has so much energy and this is going to put me so low I have to swap out because I can't build up to the flash cannon. Bring in the Altaria here. Now, I know Sky Attack won't KO from this range. I could definitely survive a move here and I'm looking to farm up energy. Probably get to just pass a Dragon Pulse and then throw. Dragon Pulse will KO. I wasn't sure if Sky Attack would. If Sky Attack would leave it in farm down range where I could farm down before it's done to move. That's probably the play, but I wasn't 100% sure. So Nine Tails comes back in here. It can't KO with the Weather Ball, so it has to go for the nuke move, either Overheat or probably Solar Beam. So I'm gonna go for the Dragon Pulse here, really hoping this KOs. It does not. Opponent gets the move. If this is the Overheat, we are going to lose. Even two Weather Balls probably would KO from this range. Registeel's still alive, but I couldn't get to the Flash Cannon before, so it's not stored. We lose that game. Shout out to Professor Z. I definitely threw there because of the late swap, but it is what it is. We're learning. First time playing the team, things happen. LOL Arcadia here in the next matchup. We got a very positive lead. What you're going to notice is that Altaria actually wins a lot of leads in the current state of the meta. Opponent swaps out into Cresselia. You love to see the ghost type come out here. Gengar definitely have to shield up at least one of these moves. So it is a moon blast. That's a good call right there. Going to build up for the Shadow Ball and then throw the Shadow Punch. You always want to build up for the move unless it's not necessary, right? So we throw the Shadow Punch. At this point, I decide to build up to their next move, throw on what I was hoping would be CMP. They're probably not going to shield here because it didn't look like it was CMP anyway, so let it go down. We're only down one shield. We have a lot of health still on Gengar, so this is a really nice spot. They come back in with the Fortress. I'm going to build up for Shadow Ball and throw the Shadow Punch here. And let's see what the opponent's going to do. We do get a shield. So now we're even on shields. This is a very good situation. I get to another Shadow Punch here. Hoping once again this is CMP tie. And then I'm just going to let the Gengar go down. Bring in the Altaria. It is CMP tie as you see here. This is the thing I love about running Gengar. High attack Pokemon. You could really exploit this mechanic right here. So we bring in Altaria. They swap out to Whiskash. So this is a bit problematic for me. Because obviously Registeel is a really tough matchup here. So I decide to throw the Sky Attack here. Hoping to get the last shield. The opponent still has not seen what my last Pokemon is. So they have no idea that it's a Registeel in the back, right? If I Deoxys to be more predictable, Gengar kind of throws them off. So I call the bait there, not because I thought that, that was a win condition, but because I felt that their win condition was sort of throwing the bait first, not knowing that I had a Registeel in the back. If they know it's Registeel, then could have played out differently, but decides to call the bait, opponent surrenders, we take that game. Altaria into Golurk care. Okay, so this is a very positive lead for Altaria, but I have not seen a Golurk in so long. I had no idea what its charge move was. I thought maybe you could have Stone Edge or something crazy, a rock type move. So I shielded just in case. You do not have to shield anything in this matchup. So the opponent catches a big break there from me not knowing what moves this thing runs. Ends up being Shadow Punch and I think Earth Power and Dynamic Punch. I looked it up after. So a lot of mistakes in this match. They come with Metacham here. And at this point, this team is looking extremely weak to Altaria. So I'm going to throw the Sky Attack right here. And we do see the shield from Metacham. I swap out now into my Gengar. They swap out into Lickitung. This is where having Sludge Bomb comes through super clutch because you're going to be doing neutral damage. If I only had ghost type moves here, we'd be in such a difficult spot. This actually pressures them to throw energy because look at how much a Sludge Bomb did, right? This is probably an XL Lickitung right here. It's taking damage, forced to throw the Body Slam. I didn't throw the Shadow Punch there to prevent the farm down, of course. Wanted them to throw before I get to the Sludge Bomb. Coming at the Registeel here, this game is looking like a GG. We could take whatever Lickitung is going to throw here. I just want to get rid of this thing at this point. So I'm going to look to throw the Flash Cannon most likely. Or maybe I'll go for the Focus Blast. Let's see how this plays out. I think I'll just go for the Flash Cannon try to save energy. Because it should be in Flash Cannon range at this point. So let's see if this KOs the Lickitung. Yes, it does. And now I'm going to swap out immediately. Or no, I'm going to build up for the Flash Cannon here. Force this Metachamp to throw. The reason I stayed in here, I wanted to see what moves it was running, right? Because if it has Power Punch, it's going to throw it immediately. This makes me think they're probably running Ice Punch Psychic. So I'm not going to shield the first one in case... Well, I mean, actually, I could shield here because... No, yeah, I should shield because they showed Psychic. So they're not going to throw Power Punch then Psychic, right? It's either Ice Punch or Psychic only. So we shield, throw the Sky Attack here, going to get the last shield. We should be able to farm down here because Ice Punch actually will not KO Altaria in this range. And 
Even if we did not farm down, hopefully we'd get it low enough where I could come in with the flash cannon and KO the Meta Champ. So we take that game right there. Jumping into the next match against Mateo JG. And we're going to be leaving Altaria once more into a Scrafty. So you see, a lot of this meta seems to be targeted with leads that counter steel types. And here I make another mistake. So let's take note here actually. I saw the Psychic icon in the top, so I instantly assumed, okay, it's Cresselia, it's Deoxys. It's actually a Mew. You do not want to swap in Gengar here. I should have stayed in with the Altaria most likely because I know some Mews are in Ice Beam, so I, I would definitely shield one move, but Gengar will actually lose this, especially if I'm behind an energy here. So I thought I could farm down here. Huge mistake, didn't get the last shield either as a result. So making a lot of mistakes here in this first set. Fortunately for us, the opponent does come back in a Scrafty. So again, it looks like another team that is shockingly double weak to Altaria perhaps. Altaria is, it's like nobody expects it to come so they don't prepare for it or something. I don't know, but Altaria is really, really strong in this meta at the time of these battles. Of course, everything might switch, but at the time, Altaria makes a lot of sense. And you guys should probably test it out, see if it's still working because it definitely was. Beedrill comes in here. So you can see a lot of these teams sort of looking to counter those charm holes, the steel holes, but not really Altaria. So there's some play there. I come in with Registeel here. This is a very difficult matchup still. Gonna get hit by a drill run here, but I should outpace it to the next move. If they get to another move, it's only going to be X Scissor here. So I was a little packed here. I was like, okay, is this gonna be a drill run? It can't be, there's no way. It's only an X Scissor. We do get off this flash cannon here. This is going to KO the B drill, and then they have like one HP left on the Scrafty in the back. So one lock on, or no, not one HP. Look at this, wow. So that was a lot closer than I expected, but we lock on down the Scrafty, Registeel, Scrafty, counter, confirmed. Elizer Arias here. In the next matchup, we got Altaria into a mirror match. So pretty tricky spot here. My Altaria is going to lose CMP most times. It has very high IVs for PvP. However, it should win a lot of these matchups just from the bulk because it should survive longer from the dragon butts at the end. So if I want to go two shields, I could probably win. I decide to throw and then swap out into Registeel here. Very risky play because Registeel, of course, is going to get hard counter a lot of the time. But let's see how it plays out. Toxico comes in, land that flash cannon. They're already down one shield, so we do get that through. That's huge. And now they're forced to throw before I get to the other move. I decide not to shield here in case they are loaded up on back to back mud bombs. Don't want to waste a shield for no reason. And then I can come in here with the Altaria basically, farm this thing down, and we're actually able to farm down before it gets to a move. So that's huge for us. Altaria comes back in. At this point, I could decide to shield this or let it go. I decide to let it go. So it looks like I'm going to save the shields for the Gengar. However, at this point, they throw energy, so I know they're dry, and I'm very close to one, so I decide to bank it just in case I need this for later. Swap out to Gengar while they're dry. Metacham in the back. Gengar loves to see it. So we're gonna throw the Shadow Punch right here. Gengar absolutely destroys Metacham if it has shields, so the opponent surrenders there. We take that game, and after that really bad throw in the first game, we end up going four and one in this first set. So jumping up to 29-39. So let's jump into set number two. We're a little warmed up now. We got Bogus Henry in match number one. Understand the matchups a bit better. We got Altaria into Sableye, a great lead for us. So the opponent's gonna swap out into Registeel. So I bring in the Gengar. This is our steel counter. Yes, Gengar is the steel counter. Not the greatest, however, it gets the job done. I'm gonna shield up this flash cannon. We're gonna build up towards the Shadow Ball Focus Blast range and try to intimidate this Registeel a little bit. So I'm gonna throw the Shadow Punch here. Registeel not shielding, that's okay. You could still win this matchup going straight Shadow Punch. It's just going to come at the cost of a couple of shields. So throw another one right there. It's going to outpace us to the next move. At this point, you're gonna shield and then commit to the farm down. So you're gonna exit this matchup down two shields you're gonna have a lot of energy here and you have two moves at least one of them should hit for neutral because you're not running double ghost we see i didn't see what came back in here so i think it was the save line probably so i'm gonna throw the shadow punch here no shield that is super ballsy considering how much energy i had but i guess it makes sense because i didn't throw a shadow ball at the registeel right so they probably assume i don't have it we do get one there and look at this 
trying to force CMP. I actually don't think they click move. They're going for the aggressive farm now. I get to another Shadow Hunter. They let that go through. These guys really know the matchup here against Gengar. Come in and is this a purified? Doesn't look like purified, so it could be. I can't actually see is that purified. Doesn't matter. Either way, it's passed on in the back. We bring in the Registeel. Even if that wasn't purified, we would survive the power gem. Bastion coming in here. You want to go straight focus blast here. No point to bait. The opponent's win condition is that you do bait because that's the only way they're going to win here. You could get to two focus blasts even though they have a shield and flamethrower. So just go straight focus blast because they let that first one go through. I'm committing to the aggressive farm down here with the lock on. Lock on down. I'm going to get this last shield here from the Sableye. Actually, no point to shield. They got no health left. Registeel closing out that game. It's been a bit of a sleeper on this team. It's mostly Altaria in the lead. Gengar pulling off the wins here, but Registeel came through clutch in that one. So Altaria into Obscon here again. Altaria proving its worth in the lead in this meta. Deoxys comes in. You love to see it. Gengar right here. But look how quickly they're throwing. This is obviously a cycle boost. So you have to shield, of course, but they made it too obvious. They threw immediately. They didn't even build up for the rock slide, so that makes it a bit too easy for me to shield. Of course, they're gonna get the shield, so it still works out for them, but you know, sometimes you might let it go if they build up to the rock slide or something. It's a bit too risky to do that. I don't recommend it. I recommend shielding regardless, but they get the two shield advantage again. And look at this. This team is all about going down two shields and still pulling off the win. So Obstin comes in. We're gonna throw the sludge bomb right here. Get the shield could have been a focus blast it's a good shield on their part sludge bomb still does hurt they let us get to a second sludge bomb here i am absolutely loving this but i'm starting to think why are they building up so much energy here i know they're going to throw a night slash at some point but it must mean that they're going for some sort of nuke for the altaria right so hyper beam possibly could be gonna come in for here even if it is hyper beam altaria is so bulky we're at full health hyper beam is not going to ko they get to the move right before they faint let's see what it is it is the Hyper Beam indeed. You can see we tank that very well. Hypno comes in, which is a little bit problematic here. So I'm going to throw the Sky Attack. This gets the Shield, which is very nice. Now I'm going to bring in the Registeel. Even if this Hypno has Focus Blast, it is not going to knock out the Registeel. This is not a Shadow Hypno either. So we could tank this pretty well, to be honest. I think we'll actually still be in the yellow after a Focus Blast. So we should outpace it to the next Flash Cannon. That Obstacle is pretty much dead in the back. So we're not in the yellow. Uh, I got a bit too excited there saying we'd stay in the yellow, but we survived it well enough to land this flash cannon right here. This is going to knock out the Hypno. And look at this, another lock on down against the counter user, Registeel, counter, user, counter. Chubby, Iguana in the next matchup. We are currently 2-0 in this set. We got Altaria into a Jellicent. This is a pretty tricky matchup and you basically have to show the first move. This match, could swing in either way. If the Jellicent's running Ice Beam, then it becomes very difficult for Altaria. If they're running Bubble Beam Shadow Ball, it becomes very winnable for Altaria. So we call the beam there, but it's the wrong beam. It's a Bubble Beam, so not looking too good. At this point, I know they most likely don't have Ice Beam unless they're an absolute madman. So Shadow Ball goes through. We get off this CMP tie Sky Attack here. Very important to get this off, of course. And now I'm going to actually stay in, it looks like. Get to another Sky Attack here. Let's see if they want to win switch or take the shield advantage. Sky Attack comes through. They let it go through. And now they come in with Registeel. So I swap out immediately into Gengar. They bring in the Mandibuzz. You hate to see it. This is the absolute worst thing you could see for Gengar here. So I'm going to go for the Sludge Bomb. And they let that go through. You can see Sludge Bomb still chunks, but the problem is Mandibuzz is pretty much a core breaker for this team. Mandibuzz is probably the worst thing you could see here. But then again, Deoxys wouldn't do much better, right? Like, I mean, Deoxys could beat it, but it's not like it would flip this matchup too much. So I still really do like Gengar, and I think it actually performs a lot better than Deoxys in a lot of situations, which is very surprising to be honest, but it seems to work here. So I'm going to throw a Sky Attack here. This match is pretty much over at this point, unless they have something that gets destroyed by Registeel in the back but it happens to be their own Registeel, so I tried to see if I could catch a Flash Cannon here. Was not able to. I did store the Sky Attack, but it's really not gonna do anything. We take the Focus Blast here. Uh, this is pretty much game where it's now pace needs to move, so I just back out. Save us both some time, and we're two and one. Elben JKA, Elbenjika, Altaria into Lickitung. So again, this is, um, this is a pretty good matchup for Altaria. If I want to match shields, we will win this. So let's see how I play this out. I'm going to go for the Sky Attack here. 
I'm usually gonna wait to see if the opponent wants to shield first before committing my own in this particular matchup. I have to be a little bit careful though, of course, because Lickitung can cause some problems for the Gengar, so we can't get too carried away here. Do let that Body Slam go through. At this point, I know if I let this second Body Slam go through, they're going to shield and take Switch. So I decided, you know what, I'm okay with that. I decided to let it go through. I'm gonna get off this Sky Attack here, expecting the shield to come up, and then they're going to take me out. And at that point, I'm gonna come in with the Registeel after. Obviously can't come in. I could try and come in with Gengar and go for a crazy farm now, but it's pointless because it has so much energy. You wanna tank these moves onto Registeel. Grass Knot Body Slam, not going to be hurting us. So this is the correct play right here. Farm it down with lock on, and it's nice to have energy on Registeel, of course, right? So we have a shield advantage. We have an energy advantage. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Opponent comes in with the Medicham. I swap out, bank that energy. Look at this, double psychic in the back. Gengar absolutely loves to see. So Gengar has a big mouth. It's teed all those psychic types in the meta. So Grass Knot comes through. We shield that, we don't care. Gonna throw the Shadow Punch here. Gengar going to go to town. Gengar with two shields against two psychic Pokemon. That's why it's always smiles. A big smile on its face. It's from seeing all these psychic types. Look at this. Shadow Punch coming through. Gets the last shield. I'm gonna commit to the farm down here. Shield, farm down. Have a bunch of energy ready to go to work on that Metacham right here. Look at this. We're at a Shadow Punch and a half. Metacham comes in. Gonna throw this first one. Don't forget we have that Flash Cannon stored in the back as well. This Metacham is dry in energy. Going to get to this second Shadow Punch. Gengar sweeping the back line right there. This thing is a monster. Do not sleep on Gengar. It is actually very strong. And everybody just loves Gengar, right? So we're three and one here. Last matchup, Charlie Boy 5. Shout out to my dog, Charlie, probably somewhere over there. We got Altaria into Alolan Ninetales. This is a horrible lead, so we're not used to seeing this. Swap out into Gengar. It's a Pelipper. This is a winnable matchup here. If this is their best counter for Gengar, we're gonna try and take Switch. So we're gonna throw the Shadow Punch here. At this point, you don't really need to bait, really. You can just go straight Shadow Punch and win this game, because they're gonna go straight Weather Ball, right? We're getting to the moves more or less at the same time, but we have an energy lead here and Shadow Claw generates more energy than Wing Attack, so you're gonna outpace the Pelipper. Going for the Shadow Punch here. This Pelipper is going to burn their second shield, and look at this. Because of that energy lead, we get to the next Shadow Punch, probably CMP tie here. This is going to knock out the Pelipper. We take Switch, plus a shield advantage. You love to see it. If the Nine Tails comes back, and I'm gonna try and see if I get the Sludge Bomb. Clearly, we cannot reach Sludge Bomb, so I'm going straight for the Shadow Punch here. Any chip damage helps at this point. We got a shield still. Bring in the Registeel here. We have alignment. Ninetales going to farm us down. All that energy isn't going to do anything to Registeel, so they swap out into Medicham. Here comes the Altaria. Gengar, again, pressuring that back line a lot. They didn't really have an answer for that safe switch, so Ice Punch comes through. We could tank that. You definitely want to make sure that they don't have Power Up Punch first, so always take the first move in this matchup because if they bait and then land the Ice Punch, you're in big trouble. So, going to stay in here. A little bit of lag, but it really doesn't matter at this point. Nothing is going to save this opponent here. Am I going to shield? No, I'm gonna let it go through and lock on down to get to this Flash Cannon, just to make this Nine Tails feel the wrath of the Registeel here. Flash Cannon going to one shot this Nine Tails, and we're going to go Four and one in back-to-back -back sets. This is going to get us to 2979. Can we reach legend with this team? We're gonna try and not choke again for the fourth time. No Paul George zone, let's get it. So those were the battles with the Altaria Gengar Registeel team. As you see, it's a very solid team. Gengar definitely puts in work. Very underrated, I feel, in this meta. Does really well against a lot of the core Pokemon you see. Medicham, Deoxys, has played against the Charmers with Sludge Bomb, has played against the Steel types. It's a very underrated pick. If you guys have any questions regarding this team, leave it in the comments section down below. You already know how it goes on this channel. I reply to every single comment you guys leave, so I'll be happy to help or just answer anything Pokemon related. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see if I can reach Legend in the next video. Take care.